Honeys and dolls, welcome back to another session of Ask Jaja with the one and only Jaja. <laughs> Jokes aside, guys, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. You guys are the ones that really motivate me to continue recording and yeah, do this every weekend. I love your views, I love your comments, and thank you for communicating with me. If you're new here, I hope you're going to be a long standing member of this family by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can get alerted with any new content that I post. I love mo both my old and new subscribers. So yes, guys, thank you. All love, all love. So today we are going to be talking about how to manage your time effectively. And effective time management leads to a productive day, a productive week, a productive month, year, and ultimately, a productive life so this video was definitely needed because there are many people who do not actually know how to stretch their time and how to make time matter and yeah how to manage it essentially I'm one that sticks to time maybe it's because of the career my career path uh, but I stick to time a lot so I got the idea of doing this video because usually when I go back home to Cameroon I'm running around like a headless chicken with my to-do list my schedules my planners flying around in the air when wondering why we haven't left the house yet even though we have a meeting in five minutes and my husband is looking at me like I'm mad because he doesn't stick to time so <laughs> anyway that's a story for another day but yes yeah, so it's needed because not many people know how to stretch their time and by understanding time you understand yourself and productivity so yes guys we are talking about how to manage your time there are two types of methods that you can use to manage your time there are one the to-do list which is essentially a list and two the calendar now many people say behead the to-do list out with it go throw it away never see it again because it takes you longer to actually write the list than it does to actually fulfill the list <laughs> so they say that it's not good and the calendar version is a lot better i'll be giving you both versions or methods shall i say i'll be giving you details about both methods and which i use um and which you decide to use is completely up to you but my job is to explain to you the methods to help you have a more productive 2021 the to-do list okay so the to-do list is essentially a list as i said it's a list that you write down of all the things that you need to get done so you set goals you write them down then you run around like a headless chicken trying to achieve all of them in one day then your day is done however the to-do list also serves as a guilt trip method because if you don't get done all the things that you've set to do in that day you'll be looking at that list feeling quite guilty and feeling like you've accomplished and done absolutely nothing even though you could have fulfilled half or even three quarters and that's even that's good enough to be honest even if you work full time during the week and you only have your weekends to do things like I do so yes that is the to-do list now I use the to-do list on the weekends as I said, I work Monday to Friday and the weekends I have to do whatever I have to do. So I generally use it in a way that I can actually remember. So I note down only five things to do on my to-do list and I don't take it past those five things. So five things on a Saturday and five things on a Sunday that I have to do. Sometimes my list is a lot shorter, but they're just a reminder of the things that I need to do before my week starts start again and to reset some of you may say only five things well honey listen I work Monday to Friday I want to enjoy my weekend as well okay so <laughs> 
I don't want to what run around all we can do to do things and then Sunday night comes and I feel like I have not enjoyed anything so yes I only note down five things and you know what if I don't accomplish those five things on my to-do list oh well I'm still gonna set my hot chocolate and I'm still gonna rest at night because I did what I could do and I ain't doing no more yeah, so me writing down those five things makes it achievable for me. It makes me look at my goals and think, oh, okay, this is doable. I can do this. Set out and do them, enjoying the tasks that I'm doing. Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I've got so much things to do. Where am I gonna start? Where am I gonna finish? Oh my gosh, there's a chores and everything. No, I don't think like that on the weekends. I don't want to think like that on the weekends because my five things will keep me in check. And yeah, you know, it's easy for me to remember. So even if I leave my diary at home or my paper that I've written my to-do list on at home, I know that they're in my mind. I can definitely remember. It's not hard to forget. It's, it's not easy, sorry, it's not, wait. It's not hard to remember five things to do in one day. It also doesn't look draining before I even started. When you write a whole list of 20 things to do in one day, you look at it and you automatically get tired and drained before you've even started. So you don't want to do that and you don't want to feel like that. So that's why minimizing it down to five things enables you to still feel refreshed and still feel like you can achieve them. But most importantly, time is not wasted by writing down a whole list of things that I know I will not be able to achieve in one day, then feeling super guilty, then cheating on myself by eating chocolate because I feel bad. Then after I finish the chocolate, I feel even worse. So yeah, you know, we, we're trying to be on that healthy, productive life thought process ban and living this year. So it all starts with how much stress you actually put on yourself. And writing a to-do list of 30 things to do in one day is stress, honey. We ain't got no time for that. Now, let's go on to the calendar method. So the calendar method is basically where you are accountable for every single hour that you have in that day. So Peter Drucker states, if you can't measure it, you cannot improve it. And that's true. That's true. You need to be able to measure to improve. Many say that the calendar is the best place to plan and track your day because you get to see not only the hours, but you also can calendar block. So I do agree with that. Like when you see your hours and when you see your tasks in those hours, you're actually able to improve in the long term. So the idea behind the calendar is to essentially track absolutely everything and I mean everything honey that you do in a day and that means blocking out the hours that you're sleeping so if you sleep for eight hours you just automatically block those eight hours out and then you also have to block out and note down the times that you are Instagram, Facebook stalking, and doing useless things. Now, when you have to write those things down and you realize that you've been on Instagram for four hours in a day, you start to feel guilty. But not only do you start to feel guilty, it actually helps you to improve your method. It ha helps you to improve your planning and it helps you to be aware of how much time you are spending doing non-productive things. So where we don't want to admit that we're on Instagram, Facebook, commenting under posts that do not benefit us in any way, shape or form for up to two, three, four hours in a day. When you see that on your calendar, it almost makes you feel a bit shamed because you knew that in those three hours or in that hour and a half, you actually could have been applying for jobs. You could have been reading a chapter of a book. You could have exercised for 30 minutes at least. You could have done and so many other things or even organize your child's sock drawer that you know you have to do but you haven't done it because you've just been putting it off so instead you've been on Facebook commenting under those posts honey you know that you shouldn't be commenting under <laughs> guys ignore me <laughs> So this method essentially helps you to take your non-productive time and turn it into productive time because you are able to see 
what you're doing with your time. Now, I use this method at work because it's easier for me to see how productive I am at work and to make sure that when I'm at work, I am being at work and doing my work that I'm supposed to do at work. So if you got that, good. If you haven't, go back and listen to it again. <laughs> so, yes. So usually before I started using the calendar method, I would probably have a file, stare at it for half the day end my day and realize I've just got paid for staring at two files. I have not been productive at work. Nothing at all has been done. That makes me feel very bad because then when I have to account to my manager and he asks, how many files have you done today or this week? It's quite shameful saying, mm, I've been at work for eight hours, but I've only done two basic tasks doesn't sound very good you know and it also doesn't make me feel good because it makes me feel kind of lazy and like I'm not excelling in my role when I started using the calendar a uh, task or kind of method sorry at work it made me feel a lot better so I then went from staring at two files a day to actually being able to accomplish and getting through at least five basic cases an hour that was a dramatic change for me it made me compete with myself it made me think you know what if I could do five every hour this day or this week the next week I'm gonna try for six and seven or then eight and nine then I'm excelling at work I'm doing more than expected of myself I'm doing more than what my manager expects which then puts me in a better position for promotions which then puts me in a better position to be the best kind of employee that I can be for myself and also for my company I then become an asset to my company so yeah I use once I found this method I started realizing that what I was writing down to accomplish I could actually actually achieve it whereas before I was thinking no that's way too much honey what you're gonna do is you're gonna sip that hot chocolate and you're just gonna do what you can do because that's all you can do but no it's not all you can do writing down and seeing your time writing down and seeing your tasks seeing them hour by hour minute by minute if you have to depending on what you do for work you understand how to push forward do better and excel we all want to excel whether we are business partners whether we are employees whether we are ceos whatever we are we want to excel in what we do so use a method that suits you to stretch out and to manage your time there are many other time management methods but i figured that these two for me right now are actually the best so it's the list method and the calendar method let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys use and if you start using one of these methods that i've suggested to you let me know how it goes for you come back to this video and drop the comment in the comment section below if you have any questions any queries anything whatsoever any comments or if you use a method already that is not one of these two let me know I'd love to read from you I'd love to hear your method and I'd also love to try it as well I'm open for trying new things all the time so guys I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you've learned something and I hope this has benefited you so that you can have a much much more enjoyed 2021 and not only hit those goals stretch your time but also be happier i love you guys take care Mwah.